Hi, this is George Alger, and welcome to today's segment of Arventura TV. Today's guest expert is Gina Gable, who is a dog trainer and the owner of Ma and Pa Kennel. And today's topic is rattlesnake avoidance for dogs. Welcome, Gina. Hello, thank you. So I hadn't really thought of this topic before. How, how wide of an area um, is this an issue for dogs to have to be aware of rattlesnakes? Well, in many areas around the country, but here in Southern California, we have um, uh, snakes in the deserts and the mountains and the foothills and even in urban neighborhoods. Okay, so does this mean that rattles, I guess because I don't know where rattlesnakes are, for instance, are they also in Northern California or just? Yes, they do have them in Northern California as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Yeah, they do this training up there as well. Good. So let's talk about this from um, how, what's the impact on dogs? I mean, is this a, a big deal or just really impacts very few dogs? Um, no. A lot of people are pretty active with their dogs. So people that go hiking with their dogs or uh, a lot of people have homes that might have rattlesnakes on their own property. Um, like I said, even in some urban neighborhoods where you wouldn't expect to find them. And um, so because dogs are usually curious when they encounter a rattlesnake, um, it's nice to have the training so that you can eliminate a situation where your dog is curious about a rattlesnake that, you know, and, and then approach it and it could potentially get bit. And of course that can be very costly as well as very traumatic for the, for the animal itself and for the family and also um, um, very painful for the animal. And, um, and it, if, you know, and then you hope that the, that the dog actually survives even. Yeah. Um, okay. So, not all snakes are rattlesnakes, not all snakes are poisonous, and yet we have this particular species that we need to be, we need to be concerned about, right? So how, how can a dog owner um, try to help their dog be aware of rattlesnakes? Well, by um, signing up for dog rattlesnake avoidance training classes in a controlled setting, you can kind of set the dog up in a situation that you're likely to encounter, only you're prepared ahead of time, and, and uh, the snakes are usually either muzzled or in some cases defanged or had the venom milked out of them um, prior, just, just prior to the class. Um, different different technicians have different ways of doing it, but we, you know, uh, eliminate the, the possibility that the dog is going to get bitten during our training. Some trainers even keep dogs in cage, or the rattlesnakes in cages during the training, um, but we like to, for it to be as realistic as possible and um, um, teach the dogs to have, uh, kind of eliminate their curiosity by, in a controlled setting, um, let them experience a rattlesnake going up to a live rattlesnake. Um, also um, teaching them to recognize the smell of a rattlesnake independently from the sight and also the sound independently from the scent and the sight so that even if the dog just smells one on the wind or just happens to hear one hidden in the grass that he'll already know what that is. He won't be curious anymore and he'll know that he should stay away from it. Wow, so this is fascinating. So there's specific training for dogs to gain familiarity with rattlesnakes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does this training differentiate between different types of snakes or basically they're going to be familiar with, they're, they're probably going to avoid all snakes? Well, by scent, uh, we believe that the rattlesnakes smell differently than non-venomous snakes because of the addition of the venom on their body. Um, so by scent alone, a dog um, might only key in on a, uh, on a rattlesnake if it was a gopher or a, a garter snake or another non-venomous species and it was only smelling them, it might uh, not feel that it needs to avoid those snakes. Um, and if they were to see a snake, um, most snakes look pretty much alike to dogs. We can, I can show a human a diagram of a venomous versus non-venomous and pick out specific features such as the shape of the head, et cetera, that would, um, and the, the, the thickness of the body, but all those types of things, it would take a long time to actually teach the dog all those specifics, the difference between 
you know, just by sight alone, the difference between a garter snake or a, or a pit viper type, you know, rattlesnake. Um, and then typically rattlesnakes are the only ones, uh, uh, since they're called rattlesnakes, they have a rattle on the end of their tail and they'll usually shake that as a warning. And so that's obviously helps a lot with the dogs to determine. And um, that was na that's nature's way of saying, warning, stay away from me. Um, there are um, at least one or two other species of snakes that have learned to mimic that behavior because they've learned that that um, helps to keep predators away. So they'll sometimes shake the tip of their tail in some dry leaves and mimic a rattlesnake sound. Okay, so let's take this from another approach. So this training sounds great for dogs, but let's suppose someone who's a dog owner is out walking in the woods or around their neighborhood for that matter, and the owner observes that there's a snake there, but um, they see that the dog is going to investigate it. Is, what, is there something that you would uh, advise an owner to do to keep the dog away from the snake? Well, really, even though I love the idea of having dogs off leash as much as possible, the safest thing to do is to have your dog kept on a leash. Because um, even after receiving rattlesnake avoidance training, um, people need to remember that the dogs are, are going to be trained to recognize when they smell or see or hear a rattlesnake and then to have a new conditioned response of to stay away. But that doesn't mean that it is like rattlesnake um, awareness training or where your dog is actually going to be looking for rattlesnakes everywhere it goes. So if you have your dog off leash, it could, you know, essentially be running through the grass, not see a rattlesnake. It might surprise the rattlesnake, so the rattlesnake doesn't even have a chance to rattle. Um, they may not smell it if the wind is blowing a different direction. And so really the best thing to do is, of course, to keep your dogs on leash anywhere, anytime that you're around. And then, of course, pull them away if you see that they're going towards a rattlesnake. Okay. Uh, on a separate note, though, um, one of the interesting things, uh, secondary benefit to having your dogs trained to rat avoid rattlesnakes is that they can be kind of like your early warning system when you're out with them. After your dog has been trained, if you're observant of his body language, you can recognize that he has suddenly become aware of a rattlesnake in your presence, and then you can possibly avoid a surprise encounter as well. Good point. Yeah. Let's take this even a, a step further. Let's suppose someone hasn't had rattlesnake avoidance training for the dog. They are out walking their dog and the dog does get bit by a rattlesnake, what would be the first steps? That, or what, 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 um, what should happen now from the dog owner's point of view? Well, definitely if the dog got bit near the face, you'd want to remove the dog's collar. Anywhere, anywhere in the shoulder, the foot, the neck, the head, you'd want to remove your dog's collar because it's probably going to, the whole area is going to start to swell. So just like a, if a human were bit on their hand, they'd want to remove their watch or their ring because it's going to be very difficult to remove after the swelling, you know, gets to a certain point. Um, another thing to do is to call a vet right away as soon as you have cell reception and let them know you're on the way. Um, and some pre-planning would be really smart, especially if you're near your own home and you're hiking, always know of a local vet that carries the antivenin, which is the, um, the, the prescription, if you will, for you know, getting bit. Um, it will um, help to eliminate all the, the negative side effects of the venom if you can get your dog um, antivenin afterwards. And not all vets carry that because it's very expensive and it has a short shelf life. And so you want to know ahead of time, and especially if you're hiking, if you've gone camping or gone out of town or something like that, you want to know before you head out on your hike, where is the closest vet that will carry that? And if your dog gets bit when you're out on your hike, as much as possible, you want to try to carry your dog back to the car, call the vet as soon as it happens so that you can um, let them know. It also needs to be reconstituted, which takes about 20 minutes or so. What does that mean? Um, the the anti-venin um, needs to be um, it needs to have liquid added to it and, and actually like, re, like, like a reconstituted milk, you know, powdered milk that you reconstitute by adding water. And then that way they can inject it into the dog when it, once it's prepared. So they can be doing that while you're en route if you um, call ahead. And you definitely, you know, want to call a vet as soon as, and then they can also help to give you some, some advice probably too on the phone. You, the, the main thing is to keep the dog calm. I would say try not to let the dog 
walk by itself back to the car if there's any chance of carrying it because that'll help to speed up the circulatory system which helps to speed up the venom from doing its damage. Good. So in terms of overall threats to a dog out in the world, I had never thought of this before. Would you say that rattlesnakes are the primary threat to dogs? Hmm, I don't know. I guess it depends on where you live. I know in Arizona they also train dogs to avoid poisonous toads. Hmm. And, um, you know, there have been people over the years ask me, you know, can you teach dogs to avoid skunks and porcupines? And, you know, you can pretty much teach animals to avoid anything, you know, if you wanted to. Um, but certainly, um, rattlesnakes are a very serious threat. It's, it's um, you know, like I said, it could be life-threatening for the dog and, and very traumatic experience for the whole family and, and costly. All right, so Gina, we're just about out of time here. I'm wondering if we could get a website where viewers could go for more information. Sure. And is there a summating message you'd like to convey to the viewers? Uh, well, my website is snakesafedog. Dot com. Um, I guess um, I would just tell them to, to at the very least, go to a rattlesnake avoidance training class. And in a controlled setting, you can at the very least it, uh, see what your dog's initial reaction would be to a rattlesnake. Some dogs do have some natural inclination to avoid, but in a controlled setting where the snake is neutralized, if you will, where he can't bite, it's always very interesting for people to see if their dog would have been a victim or whether he's got, you know, what degree of, of natural instinct to avoid them. Gina, thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. This is George Alger signing off for this segment of Our Ventura TV. Until I meet again.